Hi class, welcome back. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In the previous video, we went over responsibility centers and one responsibility center in particular was the investment center. Now this investment center, when we analyze it, we wanna take a look at profits, but we also wanna take a look at the assets because a manager in an investment center is responsible for profits. So controlling costs, looking at revenues, trying to increase sales, but they're also responsible for those assets within that investment center. Most managers in an investment center are gonna take a look at something called ROI, or return on investment. This is a really important ratio, and it's calculated by taking your, let me write this down, ROI is the um, operating income, I'm going to abbreviate here, operating income divided by the total assets in that investment center. So not necessarily the total assets of the business, but if we're looking at just a, a division or you know the investment center itself, we're looking at the total assets in that investment center. So when we're calculating this, let's assume that our operating income for this time period is 200,000 and our total assets are 1 million. So then in this case, our return on investment is 0.2 or 20%. So our assets are generating us a 20% return. Okay, our assets or our investments are generating us a 20% return, hence return on investment. Well, this is a good, a very good ratio, but actually we can take this ratio and break it down into two other ratios to do some further analysis. These two other ratios are called the sales margin and the other one is the capital turnover. So sales margin is your operating income divided by your sales for that time period. Your capital turnover is sales divided by your total assets. Okay, so let's take a look at these two together. When you multiply these two together, sales will cancel out and you'd have operating income divided by total assets which is your return on investment, okay? So now, let's plug some numbers in here. Let's assume that our sales are $2 million. So our operating income was 200,000. Our sales given is 2 million. So then this gives us 0.1 or basically a 10% sales margin. This is looking at profitability of the company. How good are we at generating operating income from sales? So for every dollar in sales, basically, we're gonna have 10 cents of operating income or 10 cents of profit. Let's take a look at it like that, all right? So now, this is a benchmark that we can now use to see you know, how we do next year. How did we do last year? Did we improve between the years? Also, we want to take a look at our competitors and see what their sales margin is. All right, let's take a look now at capital turnover. Our sales, which was already given, was $2 million. And our total assets um, are right here, $1 million. So then our capital turnover is 2 Okay. So all these numbers are given to us in our problems. We just need to calculate them. So now what this is looking at is the efficient use of our assets. How efficiently are we using our assets? So in this case here, for every dollar of assets, we're generating $2 in sales. See, that's how efficient our assets are. So we want this, this ratio to increase. So once again, we would take a look at, well, how did we do last year? How did we do two years before that? Are we improving on this ratio? And if we are, why? 
Or if we're not improving on this ratio, why? Let's take a look at the numbers and see what's taking place. Why are our assets not as efficient? Or why are they as efficient? It depends on what's happening. And then we also want to take a look at our competitors and see what their capital turnover is and see if we're doing as well as they are. All right. So offer, return on investment equals the sales margin times capital turnover. This is really good information for us to use in evaluating an investment center. Now let's take a look at another way to analyze an investment center. This can be done through something called residual income. Residual income equals our operating income minus a minimal minimum acceptable a minimum acceptable income level okay so this gives us our residual income so if our operating income is 300,000 so if the problem tells you the operating income is 300,000 and that your minimum acceptable income for that time period is 200,000 then in this example we do have residual income because we're earning more income than our minimum acceptable for that time period. All right. That's pretty simple. Now let me erase this. And what homework problems in textbooks often do is instead of giving you the minimum acceptable income, they tell you what your total assets are. And then they tell you what your, your target rate of return, what kind of interest rate do you want to earn on those assets? So times a target rate of return. Okay, so the problem might not give you your minimum acceptable income, but if they give you total assets and the target rate of return, then you can take those total assets and multiply it by that target rate of return. Let's assume in this new example that our operating income is 300,000. So I'm gonna write 300,000 here. But the problem does not tell us what our minimum acceptable income is. But they do tell us how many assets we have. In this investment center, we have a million dollars in assets and they tell us our target rate of return. We want to have a return of 25% on those assets. So 1 million times 25% gets us $250,000. So now we can calculate our residual income. 300,000 minus our minimum acceptable income that we just calculated gets us $50,000. All right, class, we've gone over return on investment and taken a look at both the sales margin and the capital turnover ratios. We've also looked at residual income. These are all good ways for us to analyze investment centers. In the next video, we'll be going over variances. So anyway, I hope to see you back again soon. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Take care.